Hey friends, it's Brian. It's time for Jeep video number 88. Uh, the weather today in Houston is 100 and a heck with that. It was a high of 107 today, which is stupid hot. Thankfully, I have air conditioning. Um, so, I need to change the battery. I've been using a Group 24 that I had laying around. It'll get me by, but this really needs to be a Group 34. So I went ahead and I bought a AGM battery from O'Reilly's. Um, as usual, great service at my local O'Reilly's. Can't say enough good things about them. Uh, made the mistake of stopping in a new Harbor Freight by me, and of course, the one person on the register is moving at snail's pace, and the manager didn't even seem to care. You know. You can, I normally like Harbor Freight, but you can, it just goes to show you can put a good Harbor Freight in a bad location, or you can put a good company in a bad location and you're still going to get crap employees. Uh, anyway, so what we're going to do today is change the battery and then I'm going to bleed the brakes. Um, I've got Harbor Freight's basic 14 piece uh, brake bleeder. That's what I'm going to be using and reviewing. Um, my brakes are just a little squishy and so the, the place to always start is with bleeding the brakes. Um, but first, let's go ahead and uh, change the battery. Um, if you don't know, this started out as a salvage. Um, I, I bought this at a salvage auction. It was completely totaled out by a major insurance company. I thought it was repairable. Looks like I was right. It's running and driving at this point. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to go get it inspected, then I'm going to get a license plate put on it, and that's going to become my daily driver and my runabout, and just my fun Jeep. Um, the, uh, I, I probably got about half what I would have had to pay if I bought one of these on the market. Um, they're really overpriced, and Jeep's quality hasn't changed much. Um, I owned a YJ in the late 1990s. Um, if you enjoy the video, hit that like button. I really appreciate those. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, and also, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon if you want to find out when I release new videos. Um, and uh, last but not least, check out my playlist, Jeep Build, that has all the videos related to bringing this from salvage to uh, runs and drives. Eh, the heck with that. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and flip the hood all the way up for easy access. One of the great things about a Jeep, it's easy to get access. All right, so this is a 2005 Jeep, and it uses um, 10 millimeter washers. things you can do once you've got the bolt loosened is you can just come in here with a screwdriver and twist that disengages the uh, clamp and allows you to just lift off well normally it disengages the the clamp and allows you to lift it off So let's lift this uh, battery out of here. This is a six-year-old battery, and again, it's just doing, it was doing temporary duty for testing. So I did decide to go with an AGM battery. Um, the consensus online is that Optima is not that great of a brand anymore. So I skipped buying an Optima battery. Um, here's the hold down. And, um, but O'Reilly had a pretty good deal. Um, this is the same company that makes batteries for Sam's Club. I could have, uh, I could have bought the battery at, Pull that out of there. We don't need this. 
Um, I could have bought the battery at Sam's Club. It would have been fifty dollars cheaper, but I don't have a Sam's membership, and on principle of I get shitty service at Sam's Club, I refuse to buy one. Um, so let me figure out what that is, and I'll be right back. All right, so unfortunately, this goes way the hell down in here. Um, so the way this works is this drops uh, down here in between the frame and the battery. And it basically wedges it in. So that's the right spot. and use a ratchet to set it. Uh, I got it started by hand. movement than I'd like so let me see if I can wedge it down a little better I don't want to see any movement well, looks like I'm shut out of luck it's gonna it's gonna budge again a bit but it won't lift out <laughs> I'd really rather this didn't move at all that is what it is um, okay so there's two ways to protect the terminals from corrosion um, one of them is uh, a, an appropriate grease like super lube and a brush which we're not going to use today and the other is a battery terminal protector and let's see to it. So it's going to get two coats. One goes underneath and then uh, one coat will, I'm going to spray the terminals themselves once um, all right, so that's all there is to it. 
So that completes putting the battery in. Uh, give me a couple minutes. I'm going to start working on bleeding the brakes. All right, brake fluid has a service life of a couple of years, and the brake fluid in here is just really nasty. It should not be dark like this. So before I flush it, I want to try and get as much of it out of here as possible. And I just happen to have a syringe that can be used for this. And I'm just tossing it in my uh, oil recycle uh, jug. It's hydraulic oil, so I don't know what else to do with it. Just know it shouldn't be this color. So what happens is over time it absorbs moisture. And it might have been fine when it was, you know, last driven. But that's been a while. Now in this particular case, I'm gonna to top it all the way off because I'm planning to bleed it. And uh, then I'm gonna store this down here. Brake, brake fluid will remove paint, so I'm not gonna put any on there. And uh, next, let's go ahead and get the uh, bleeding tool set up. I'm having a little bit of trouble with my camera mount today, so I apologize if the angles are off. Uh, it's a hermetically sealed package, so we're gonna cut it open. Any instructions whatsoever. Oh no, there are instructions. They're hiding inside the package. Give me just a minute to review these. All right, so you can use you can actually use this to uh, evaluate the vacuum system on your vehicle. I guess check for vacuum leaks. Um, what you don't want to do is get any oil in here. And this is item six three three nine one. It ships with a spacer that you have to remove. I'm gonna recycle this. And then that's a vacuum release, so you can. All right, so it comes with a couple lengths of hose. Um, and what you wanna do is figure out how to set this up so that you are not going to tip the cup over while you are bleeding it because if you tip the cup over you will get air into the system and bad things will happen and that's pretty much the story or the the moral of the story when using this so two pieces 23 inch hose and then inside the cup are a whole bunch of other little pieces there are some adapters and i i regard this as a one-time use tool I mean, to me, you're going to use this once, and you're going to lose the pieces, and that'll be the end of that. So it has uh, some, let's see, yep. So 
you put that on the lid and then you put this back together and it says one twenty-three inch hose goes to the pump uh, this thing was like fifteen dollars so again in my opinion this is a throwaway item and then the other piece goes to an adapter and then these adapters will fit onto the uh, different parts of your vacuum system so these should fit the uh, brake lines and let's see which one does okay so there is a rubber cap over the end of this uh, or at least there should be you're going to gently pry that off and then for your next project just figure out which one of these fits on here so that one doesn't that one doesn't and let's see about the small one the small one does okay so that's that's the piece now let me figure out what size wrench that is and I'll be right back Okay, so this is a 3 8 uh, wrench. Uh, it's really irritating that some things are metric and some things are standard. I will show you how this is set up uh, on the next wheel. For right now, I'm actually just going to do it. So I'm going to pull a little bit of a vacuum. I can see... i got a 10 PSI vacuum, and then I'm going to open the, the line and just see what comes out. Uh, all right, so it's being stubborn, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force it. I'm gonna spin it, and then I'll put this back on. So, I want to be able to open it wider. So I'm going to close that up and empty my uh, container because my container is really full at this point. So we're going to go for round two. I'm going to pull a nice vacuum on this. Got up to about 15 pounds of vacuum, and then I'm just going to open it up.
right, so I've got to empty my uh, uh, cup again. And again, part of what I'm trying to do is bleed the air out, and part of what I'm trying to do is uh, get the old fluid out. So I'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open it up again. And what I wanna know is, do I have bubbles coming out? I do. And the question is, are they from the brake line or are they from this uh, plastic fitting? So the other thing you can do is uh, probably skip the fitting. Let me get the... All right, I'm gonna empty my little cup again and then I'm gonna try something different. I'll be right back. Pause the camera. All right. So again, I'm gonna. Oops, I just fucked that one up. So I'm gonna go ahead and rebleed this one. I was gonna move on to the next, uh, to the other front, front one, but uh, I fucked up. really don't know where these bubbles are coming from. All right, we're gonna call that good. <clears throat> so I want it nice and locked off. All right. And now we're gonna move to the other side for real. So we'll take this off. Put that back on okay so I'm gonna leave this one on wide angle and let y'all see the overview of how I do this and you know my Jeep is lifted a little bit so it does make it easier all right so first we're gonna pry that off should not need any tools here and then this one should be in reverse so I'm gonna put the wrench a little, I'm gonna bias the wrench a little farther forward. Okay, and now I'm going to set up my hose.
Okay, so I'm gonna bleed everything out of my little cup here. And part of that involves taking another couple pulls on it. And let me go empty this and I'll be right back. Just this this time. All right, that's a good spot. A larger uh, cup would make a world of difference, but it would have been twice as much. And again, I consider this a one time use tool. trying to get the nasty old aged fluid out of here. It's certainly much clearer. So that's as much as we can do there. Okay, so I think we're good here. I'm gonna uh, move to the back. All right, so the back one is a real pain in the ass to get to unless you're behind the vehicle. Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. And it's a different size. Wow, all right, let me get, uh, it looks like a quarter. It's uh, apparently it's five sixteenths. All right, so let's put everything together. I can't believe they use different size bleed screws. 
on this vehicle. That takes us to 15 pounds of vacuum. Uh, we should have done this the other way. Let's see if we can get this in here. No, it has to be the hard way. dump this fluid and go get the adapters because that's too much space for me. Alright, so let's see if this fits. It does. Alright. Put under vacuum and then we're gonna open this somehow because we can't fucking see it. Shit. Okay. 
you're not supposed to have it open like that. That's the whole point of this tool, but this access is so bad. So let's switch sides. Okay, so now we're on the rear driver's side, the last of the four. Um, I'm not sure I would really recommend this kit. It's uh, pretty unstable. That's that's my biggest gripe. And access here is typical Jeep. You know, who gives a fuck about doing maintenance on it? Sorry, you guys are probably all only going to see my uh, elbow here, but there's the access on this is just exceptionally shitty. I think this kit is not that fantastic. I guess this would be okay on a left, but fuck, what a pain in the ass. It's acting like there's an air leak. Uh, this really needs to be bled by two people. So hopefully this is functional. I'm gonna test drive it here in a minute and see.
driveway like this again.
doesn't, it, I can drive it with one hand. I mean, I'm only doing 20, 30 miles an hour, but still, I think it drives fine. A little springy, but drives fine. All right, let's put it away.